<laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm Estelle Gittins from the Manuscripts and Archives Research Library at Trinity College Dublin, and I'm going to introduce a commemorative project which has proved to be a bit of a new departure for all of us. Now, like all libraries, uh, we've experienced significant disruption since 2008 in the form of funding and resource cuts, changes to our usual outreach activities, and the rather more welcome disruption of a new university librarian. Now, these factors have meant changes to our traditional commemorative response, including a reduction in the size of our exhibitions. All of this change has been happening whilst we try to respond to Ireland's decade of centenaries, which commemorates the period of change which brought about Ireland's independence from Britain. Uh, this encompasses the First World War, the 1916 Easter Rising, the Irish War of Independence, and the Civil War. This is a hugely important thing for Ireland, and historical collections are central to the commemoration, and archives have never been more prominent in the public consciousness. Now, the Library at Trinity is famous for its medieval manuscripts, but in reality is home to thousands of diverse special collections. Despite this, nobody would have thought of us as the go-to place for 20th century history, and it was important we wanted to change that view. With the central event in the centenary calendar, the 1916 Easter Rising looming, we had to think of a new, more visible way to commemorate it. So we took our cue from the collections themselves, which are lots of small, disparate ones, which would lend themselves easily to an episodic project like a blog. It was important for us to start our project a year ahead of the anniversary so that we could draw attention to the library's resources to act as a catalyst for research rather than to simply tell the story of the rising. So this is what was devised. A year-long blog project with its own website, Twitter account and with posts on a weekly basis. Posts are by library staff, academics and other experts. Lots of our academic bloggers have been tapped on the shoulder whilst they've been working in the reading room. They've had books to promote, which we can promote on Twitter. So it's been a reciprocal relationship. Each post links to the library's catalogue entries and to the digital, digital collection site where applicable. The content is made up of diaries, letters, pamphlets, photographs and objects from both sides of the political divide. These items are carefully recorded eyewitness accounts or were collected and preserved because their owners knew that they were witnessing their world change in front of their eyes. In exploring this material, you can see the stories of ordinary people as they struggle to comprehend what is happening to them. And in others, you get a sense of the very complicated political and social situation in Ireland at this moment. Now, this is illustrated by the library's copy of the proclamation, which is Ireland's Declaration of Independence taken from the walls of the rebel headquarters at the General Post Office. During conservation, 11 First World War recruiting posters were found pasted to the back. This articulates the two opposing political viewpoints coexisting at the same time. Um, one group uh, recruiting for the British Empire, the other rejecting the empire and proclaiming a republic. One of the strengths of the library are also the accounts written by women either during or immediately after the rising. Some of these have only been highlighted for the first time uh, through Changed Utterly. The college archives themselves are also an essential resource for the study of the rising, especially the papers of the officer training corps who defended the campus until British troops arrived. And other institutional records provide fascinating posts. A recent one uh, on Dublin Zoo uh, was how Dublin Zoo coped with the rising and basically they ran out of food for the carnivores. <laughs> Uh, very quickly, we realised the idea of Changed Utterly is less about presenting a finished product, but rather more about the process of getting there and building a discussion community. Uh, Twitter is essential in this and providing another access point. Our followers are mainly academic, local history and official 1916 sites, but we've also had a great deal of engagement with second level teachers and general researchers. It's also proved useful for calls for information. Our followers identified the location of a photo of an armoured car, uh, and we also discovered how many armoured car enthusiasts there are right there. <laughs> um, do please follow us. We are just shy of 1,916 followers, which is our aim for obvious reasons. Uh, one of the most exciting and unexpected outcomes has been an increase in the levels of donations of new archival material. This uh, came in on long-term loan. It's an autograph album compiled in the Vrongoch internment camp in Wales, and many, where many of the rebels were taken afterwards. And the blog post on this was written by a relative of the internee. Now, collaboration has been at the centre of Changed Utterly. Collaboration within the library across the Special Collections Department, 
uh, digital resources and conservation, but also with other Trinity departments, the Decade of Commemoration Committee and Communications. Throughout the project, we've had constant interaction with academics and students, and also with the student newspaper and societies. We're also very excited to be involved in the library's 1916 web archiving project with the Bodleian and the British Library, which has just launched. Uh, and we've also assisted many other institutions with their exhibitions, including the flagship one at the General Post Office. We've collaborated with journalists, especially the Irish Examiner, who've turned a number of our posts into a regular feature in the newspaper. As we got further into the project, we found that there was great interest in specific items, and so we built on this by running spin-off presentations. This is an online exhibition produced using Google Cultural Institute of a photograph album, and my colleague Shane did a huge amount of work with The Guardian on the story behind the proclamation. So using impact again, it's hard to know how to measure the impact. We've certainly been taken by surprise by the media attention, uh, and we were described as one of the more innovative responses to the centenary on RT's history show. We've also been placed in a central position on the Trinity College homepage. And as of last week, we had 46,000 views of the blog. We've been able to feel the impact in terms of the increased visitors to the reading room and in email inquiries and orders for images. We've also forged new relationships with modern history academics, and we found an international audience that we had always hoped to reach. We feel as though we have more of a connection with our researchers, and it's fascinating to see the reaction to the material and the breadth of research that's coming out. So to finish, I'd like to thank my co-lead Shane, all of our contributors, and say we've still got a few weeks to go. So if you're interested, check us out, follow us on Twitter. Thank you.